I feel very excited about bringing these awards to Southeast Asia for the second year. It's a dream come true. We didn't want to do it just once. And the second time we've come, we've had amazing, amazing interviews. So really excited. Programs like this are incredible because they create a reach and an impact that single organizations working on their own simply cannot achieve. <laughs> It's not just about bringing incredible women together, it's about then giving them the network and voice they need to make those massive differences in their lives. If women see successful women, they will be motivated and inspired. And so I think awards such as these are critical for women to believe they can achieve anything they want to do. Aviva is supporting the Women of the Future Southeast Asia Awards because of its fantastic passion for diversity, inclusion, and just promoting amazing, strong women and entrepreneurial people. WorldPay supports these awards because we, as a business, are a young, fast-growing, dynamic business. And these awards represent the same qualities. This is about entrepreneurship. This is about the future. This is essentially about society. All candidates work tirelessly to empower others and forge new paths ahead. Never afraid to challenge traditional hierarchies and stereotypes in order to affect positive change. Today, I've met so many phenomenal women. I think that uh, even for those who may not have been the announced winner, but all of them in my heart are winners already. It's a terrific evening. There's excitement, there's uh, suspense, uh, some very, very beautifully dressed people, uh, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the evening. First and foremost, to be recognized for this award is very humbling, and I feel very blessed to be in the company of inspiring, talented women that have been shortlisted in the nominees for the rest of the categories. We are often, you know, one in ten. In, in meetings, in conferences, everywhere we go, we have a voice, we have something to contribute, and we need to encourage more women to step forward. One is not enough. We need more. With this award that has been given to me, I will use this as a platform in order to inspire the women in Brunei and make everyone understand that you can come from nothing and get to where you want to go. There's nothing that can stop you. You can do whatever that your heart desires. So long as you put your mind to it, anything is possible. A very good afternoon to one and all and welcome to the Women in Focus webinar series brought to you by the Women of the Future Southeast Asia Awards Program and supported by the British Embassy in Indonesia. I'm Diana Putri Allen and together with my colleague Joanna Octavia, our country champions for the Women of the Future Southeast Asia Awards Program. Now this program, as you've seen from the video earlier on, seeks to recognize talented women aged 35 and under in eight different categories, which Joanna will tell you more about later in this hour. We also have a Mentor of the Year Award open to men and women of all ages uh, who are behind the success of younger women in the region. Now, the highlight of this afternoon is, of course, about our special guest and the, her success and story of leadership, um, whom I'll be having a fireside chat with later on. But before that, I would like to introduce you to another exceptional woman. She is the founder of the Women of the Future Awards program, Pinky Lilani. Pinky? 
Thank you so much, Diana, for that introduction and a very, very warm welcome to everyone. We are so excited to have all of you with us. It was actually 16 years ago that I had the idea of the Women of the Future Awards. And I remember one evening I had the idea and at 11.50 that same evening, I actually sent an email to Sherry Blair, who was our Prime Minister's wife and a great supporter of what I've been doing so far. And I said, Sherry, I want to do this award for young women under 35. Will you be the patron? And 10 minutes later, her email came back saying, of course, I'll support you. And that actually led to this whole program. So actually, the candle that she lit many, many years ago has illuminated so many women in so many countries around the world. Now, I actually came to England many years ago when I met my husband in India and married him in three weeks. He had done no due diligence whatsoever. He thought he'd got a good Indian wife who could cook. I had never been inside the kitchen. And then one of the first questions I was always asked when I came to England is, do you walk two steps behind your husband being a good Muslim wife? And I actually said, no, I walk 10 steps behind him so he doesn't know what I'm getting up to. And I think I've actually increased that distance now. But the Women of the Future is a platform to recognize women, to help them find their voice, to shine light of them, to inspire others and to give every person in the world role models because we're all looking for women who are doing exceptional um, things and often we don't know who they are. During our journey over the last 16 years, we've discovered some amazing women one of our candidates who won our science category in the UK um, two years ago it was actually on the team at Oxford developing the vaccine. We had a young girl who was only 18 and she discovered two asteroids in her gap year. And in Southeast Asia, we met some of the most amazing, amazing women. And each time I hear their stories, I'm just so blown away. So I hope you will join us by nominating even more women the one thing we've noticed about Southeast Asia is so many women will say, I'm not good enough. I, I've seen all the people who've been nominated and I don't think I'm good enough. You are good enough. You, let us be the judge of that. So we'd love to hear about women who are actually changing the landscape. I'd like to leave you with three tips that I have learned. And I think it's nice to learn something and share it if we can. So my first one is be curious, keep learning. Think of that sentence, when was the last time I did something for the first time? The other one is be brave. And being brave sometimes means being yourself, being authentic. Don't be afraid to find your voice, to be yourself. And the last one is be kind. Kindness is the DNA of all our programs. It's my own personal DNA. Because I think when we are kind, when kindness is the currency, then we are all millionaires. And it's so easy to be kind. And we're here today really because of the kindness of so many. So I want to pay tribute to some of them. Diana and Joanna have done an amazing job. Their commitment, their passion, their enthusiasm is absolutely second to none. And I cannot thank them enough. We are so grateful. We're also so excited to have someone who I believe is such an amazing personality from Indonesia, Ibu Susi. So thank you so much for giving us your time. And also it's such a privilege for us to have the, our wonderful ambassador in Indonesia, Owen Jenkins, to join us today. Thank you so much, Ambassador Jenkins. I would like to now hand over to you to say a few words. Have a lovely afternoon. Uh Thank you, uh, Deanna. Thank you so much uh, for, the, for those kind words and for the invitation uh, to join you uh, today at this webinar to support the work of the Women of the Future Awards in Southeast Asia. Um, and just this webinar itself uh, shows um, amazing women doing amazing things. Um, so you yourself, uh, Pinky Lilani, the founder of, of this event, of course, our, our guest of honor, Ibu Suzi Pujiastuti, uh, who will share her wisdom with us yeah. later but also uh, uh, Imran uh, Lilani, the director of the Women of the Future Awards program. And of course, Joanna Octavia and Diana Putri-Alan who've organized this wonderful seminar for us today. This event 
It is such a great initiative uh, to highlight the awards. I'm so pleased uh, to support it. As I know, my fellow ambassadors um, and diplomats in the British network around the world have done. And it was lovely to see one of our most distinguished uh, diplomats, uh, currently our High Commissioner in Australia, Vicky Tradell, featured in the video which we've, which we've just seen. I know she's a, a great supporter of this scheme. And I wanted to join in and wanted to, to support because I'm really keen to see a greater awareness of the awards in Indonesia and to see more young Indonesian women nominated for their achievements and potential. As we've heard, this award uh, recognises and showcases the achievements of women under 35 in a range of fields. It can be industry, the professions, sports, arts, civil society and, and many more. Now in its fourth year, it celebrates the successes of these future leaders to bring greater awareness of their contributions and importantly, to inspire and show future generations of women leaders that they can do the same. Emma Watson, the UN Women and Amb Women's Ambassador, who many of you may know better as Hermione Granger from the Harry Potter films, highlighted in a speech that she made five years ago now, that while 60% of college graduates are women, only 3% of leaders worldwide are women. And this reaffirms, if any of us needed to be told, um, that a lack of women in leadership roles is certainly not because of any lack of talent or ability or of education. Much research has been done as to why uh, there is a lack of women and the challenges that women face, whether that's navigating discrimination, traditional gender roles, uh, caring responsibilities, I could go on. And we know that the COVID-19 pandemic has amplified existing gender inequalities because in the global picture, women tend to hold less secure jobs. Gender equality is central to the work that I do and that my embassy does uh, and right across the UN, UK diplomatic network. We have a series of projects here in Indonesia focused on women entrepreneurs and marginalized community in the tech sector. And my colleagues at the British Council do the same. They've just announced, for example, an exciting new scholarship for women graduates to study for master's degrees in STEM subjects in the UK. My Prime Minister has just appointed a new uh, envoy for girls' education to ensure that women uh, and girls can achieve 12 years of quality education. And in this context, it's hugely important that women and girls have role models to look up to and to be motivated by. I very much welcome the work that uh, Pinky Lulani and her team are doing on two aspects in, in particular. Firstly, to tackle the peer pressure that can sometimes cause women to abandon their hopes and their ambitions and conform to a groupthink, a generalized idea of what their role should be. And this awards program gives aspiring and inspiring women uh, access to like-minded individuals who will show their, that it's possible and support their ambitions. And secondly, I applaud the work that the team is doing to uh, support a redesign of the leadership language. Pinky, you, you talked about the importance of kindness. And I think that idea can replace the traditional idea of strong leadership uh, and recognize that there is a different sort of approach to leadership, which emphasizes kindness and collaboration. Kind leaders create kind organizations in which we can all flourish. As we listen to our keynote speaker today, please think and look around you. Who are the inspiring women? Who are the amazing women who are doing great things in your organizations, in your networks? Who are the role models for kindness, for collaboration, for ambition and courage? This doesn't have to be just in government or in big business. These women appear everywhere and can inspire us. And if you see them from whatever walk of life they're in, please nominate them for the awards. It's a fantastic way of, of highlighting their achievement and inspiring future generations. But that's enough for me. And I would really like to welcome our guest speaker of honor today, Ibu Suzy, Suzy Pujiastuti. Um, and Ibu Suzy is famous um, as one of the most inspiring and amazing leaders uh, in Indonesia today. Not just women leaders, I should say, but of all. <laughs> She is a remarkable role Thank model. Thank you. Many, many um, not at all. It's deserved. But for your efforts <laughs> in making the glass ceiling. Um, having dropped out of, of high school in favor of entrepreneurship, Ibu Susi built multi million dollar businesses across Indonesia and was then called to, be, uh, to serve as Indonesia's 
Minister for Maritime and Fisheries Affairs between 2014 and 19, where again, she broke the mold, innovated and did things in a way that others hadn't. So an amazing role model for all of us, but particularly for young women and girls. And we're very fortunate to have you with us uh, today, Ibu Suzy. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Ambassador. Yeah. Thank Without you, Excellency. Further, thank you. Thank you. Let, let me hand back to uh, Ibu Diana and Ibu Suzy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, Excellency. Ibu Susi, can you hear us? Yeah, yes. Ibu Susi, no, thank okay. you so much. I can find you can finally see my face. I have been messaging you on WhatsApp and bothering you. Oh, <laughs> thank you okay. so much, Ibu, for making time it's for okay. us today. Um, to any of you who might have questions for Ibu Susi, please send them through the QA uh, button on your screen. Um, it was to see it's such a privilege to have you join us this afternoon. You have been highlighted uh, as an exceptional person in many ways. You know, constantly in Indonesia, you are pulled as one of the I most- I hope in positive way. Po <laughs> positive ways, positive ways indeed. Okay. Um, otherwise, we won't invite you here. But, you know, you've constantly been pulled as, as one of the most popular figures in the country. And I'm often hailed as an example of someone who is also very relatable. When Pinky was talking about being authentic earlier on, you know, I thought, wow, this really resonates with you. And as Ambassador has mentioned, you know, how far you have come without being a university graduate and for succeeding in typically male dominated industries. So we know all that about you, but I'd like to begin by asking you about your childhood, you know, as a little girl, as a young woman, did it ever occur to you that you would come this far in life? Or were you always the sort of, of person, you know, to sort of set out, uh, uh, you know, that trajectory for success? Was it always at the back of your mind that you wanted to be more? Uh, well, thank you very much for the opportunity to share here. Actually, I, I don't feel I have that much, but yes, uh, if I could be used to insp giving inspirations or sharing anything that I could help other women to feel uh, more progress and more move forward, I would, I would love to share it. If I would dream or think that I could go this far, of course not. All I have since my childhood, it just, uh, my dad, my mom always talk about freedom and independent that's two are uh, together you can't have freedom without you being independent while if you want to get you independent you also have to free yourself to 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 be more independent that, that's that's a key and that's only able my dad say if you are consistent with what you do of course, then you learn how to be persistent too. But the first is just being consistent and always, always, uh, how you call it? If I think about the men's, the, uh, the men's world or men domination, I never think of that. I think a good thing from my family, they never teach us that women and men are different. So my mindset is, uh, well, it's the same. As long as it's even it's rocket science, you can learn about it. So anything that other can do, I can do. I'm not. Uh, I never think of uh, it has to be men doing it or women cannot do it. That's that's far from my my way of uh, of seeing things and also doing things. Uh, if that's go this far. Yeah, I just want to do what I like. That's that's that the thing that drive me, and uh, that's why I was uh, I was uh, smiling when you say you had been very popular. I hope in positive manners because uh, many are people thinking, ah, don't be like us. It's too rebel, you know. It's uh, this is this mess everything and make things <laughs> like. 
uh, yeah, but that's the only way to go breakthrough. If I don't do hard, I don't do work as as consistent as uh, as passion as I have. I, I will not be anybody because with mm -hmm. my second grade of high school graduation, what what can you do? I can ask ambassador for a job in the British embassy. <laughs> I cannot even get a job for cleaning service because the minimum is high school. Yeah. So uh, things like that. So when I decide to quit because I feel I go more on the, my my freedom on, on thinking on on doing thing. I feel school is is not things for me. I, I don't I don't fit into the system. So it's good for other children, but not for me. That that's what I realized. That's why I decided to quit. I don't advise anybody else to do that because it's it's very tough. The end of the day, you are you are you are facing things that yes, you need paper diploma <laughs> on doing <laughs> things. Right. Or you have to do it in the way I was doing it, which I think if I look back, yes, there are things that it's it it's been not very normal or regular effort. It's been it's in it's been a life fight, work and passion. So yes. if you don't have these three, don't go my way. Continue your study and uh work in the normal regular that people is doing it so uh, if you basically whatever you choose you you have to be consistent and committed to it i think that's very important and i think that's how you build yourself for the future for your future so that's on my belief. I, so. I think that's that's really interesting, Ibu Susi. I mean, you talked about freedom, independence, consistency, um, commitment, you know, passion, and also about you know rocking the boat, you know, which is which is very ironic because we know you've been rocking a lot of boats uh, when you were minister, <laughs> when you were minister, um, but you know you've obviously taken a very different road to the top and, and that's what we were focusing on, you know, taking the road less traveled to the top. What would you say has been the most significant challenge and also the most inspiring thing for you as a leader? Well, as a CEO, I, I, see, I see it more into, into some time because I'm I also role as a mother. I also role as a CEO, and I'm I'm also role as a public figure, and that's sometimes before I come to the point to the to the top example as a minister positions, I was I was a bit struggle because kind of the society also don't really take it, you know, uh, hundred percent. Yeah, they okay, Ibu. I we we love you. We like it, but 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 there are always but you know it's like something that uh, so I think in the end of the day, it's more into yourself. How how you feel comfortable on continue taking all those roles. Sometimes there is conflicting between mother, career woman, and this. But I think where you are more relaxed, not, not to think matter much about it, you get more accomplishing on doing it well. You know, you are, you are more, finally you are, you are doing it much better when you don't make matter about it. Like, oh, this is a man's world. I'm a woman. How can I do this? Uh, I should not supposed to do this. When you think like that, you will always get kind of not very comfortable with yourself. But once you don't think like that, it's easier for you. And when it's easier, you 
you you have more possibility to accomplish and success with your way with with your work and what the challenge like an example when i do as a minister on marine affairs and fisheries is that the indonesia want to be maritime fulcrum we want to be one of the best seafood exporter biggest exporter mm. while geographically yes they are but it's been years practice of illegal fishing out there yeah. now if you realize thousands of foreign vessel fishing in 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 sovereign country indonesia is is not under colonial but it's a, it's a sovereign country there might be some connectivity and partnership illegally with our officers and how to deal with that you cannot you only have 5 years to solve your problem absolutely so to break through i proposed to the government to president here my boss yeah. Yeah. it's my first time also experience to have a boss and i said yes. look our regulation luckily is very fortunate we have that regulation yes so i could take easily the ownership of the action executing the rule we invite all the ambassador excellency you know i am the most uneducated minister but i have the biggest portfolio so logically rationally i will not be able to success my work unless you all supporting me so i was requesting to six ambassador that time i invite them for lunch would you help me uh, please announce to your fisherman to go home if i find them still taking our fish i will going to sing them so <laughs> it sounds <laughs> it's a very rude thing you do but it sounds very gentleman i think what do and, they say uh Iron fist in a velvet glove, isn't it? That's oh, the they same. say it was Susie B. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the velvet glove. Yeah. So, Absolutely. and you have that. You know what? That is the the uh, how you call it the the is the, the the excellence of being a lady, being a woman. You cannot talk like that to those gentlemen ambassadors. If you yes. are a man, they will probably punch you. <laughs> so you know, using uh, our advantages to an advantage, I suppose. Yes, yes. So uh, and and we can do it very nice. And yeah, we we not we are fine. We have bilateral relationship. We are good. I'm requesting and and plea for help for support. Yes. I say I will I will be a failed minister if you all doesn't help me. I said so and everybody else of course excellency we will we will support you and done the 4 hours lunch was done very well. So I was <laughs> just talking announcing it and then I make another speech to all Indonesian politician general please do yeah. help and assist me. to be able to do the job that my boss my president gave to me for the best of the country so i going to run this policy and please if anything happen about it it's all me so if you not happy please sue me in the court meet me in the court so i basically nicely shut down comprom compromising right by by making the public speak like that so all my friends my my senior general my senior politicians with all due respect yes. i have to do and run my work and, and and this is the the i think the authenticity i think uh that we were talking about earlier on and and also as pinky pointed out you know sort of the soft power what you know ambassador had also mentioned when we think about leadership we always just talk about strong leadership but then there are other ways to lead um there are other ways to 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 
to manage people, to manage situations. Um, it was to see earlier on, you also spoke about, you know, the challenges you faced as someone who, you know, you are a CEO, you're a minister, you are a mother, you are a public figure. You know, years ago, there was an interview with uh, the CEO of PepsiCo in India, India Indra Nui, and, and she was asked if a woman can have it all, you know, be a mother, be a wife, be a career woman, be all of it. And she said that it's, it's difficult to have it all, especially at the same time. What are your views on, on that? Uh, in the end of the day, yes, you can, but cannot be all in one time. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm become very, very, uh, very, uh, become a mother who has more time now than before. But I was a mother still, but I don't have enough time with my kids. Now I have more time because the business is already established. I had more employer. I have, uh, I can afford to pay a good manager. And uh, you know, it, it's, yeah, you can't have everything in one time either. So either you are a man or woman. So. Sometimes the time is not yet belong to you, but you will have it later. But, but mm -hmm. yes, sometimes sometime we human never feel, how you call it? You want to have all in once. Yeah. The greed, that's the greed of us. But once you learn that, that it just make you more stressful actually to, to always think that way, you you go more slower but i think woman has more opportunity or actually having the opportunity already on them to think differently and see things more into different dimension different angle of of of, of things absolutely i mean i was very happy that at the end of the day a recognition come from foreign magazine, uh, foreign policy magazine, yeah. recognized me as one of the global thinker of security and defense. That the end of the day, what I did with sinking the boat yeah. is actually goes further, you know, by, by cutting off those illegal vessel at sea, we also Absolutely. cutting down illegal immigrant Mm -hmm. that normally hundreds of boats go to Australia, uh, illegal drugs, um, dealings, trade, smuggling arms, smuggling people, human trafficking, and also endangered species, animal trade. Exactly. This all cut. The beginning, you don't think of that. Yes. Uh, I cannot talk, I, I have that thought, but I cannot yes. talk on, on, on the early approach yes. because then everybody will start, uh, how you call it, putting, right. putting a stand against it. So I was just uh, innocently state, oh yeah, this is our constitution that I can sing illegal fishing vessel. That's it. So And, and then there's a domino effect and the impact and, and also the environment you mentioned just now about the marine and the marine life that is being compromised yeah, because of I all mean, this illegal. The environment is something you're very focused on that has become your post, you know, the post politics, your career um, has been focused on business, your media personality, and you're also very focused on the environment. Tell us a little bit about that, um, you know, having that part of your sort of that, that aspect that it's, a, it's your passion project, so to speak. So tell us a little bit more about that and how um, women, you know, can also get involved in, in activism in this sense. Well, uh, many people think that I, uh, I speak or uh, go as an activist on environment is after become minister, actually not, been long time before. So I had been working with Walhi, Greenpeace, so uh, as independent activists. So, and also on fighting the corruption. I was in the 
I, Indonesia Corruption Watch as one of the internal auditors. So long time ago, when I was young. So, uh, so I think it's very important to have uh, woman thoughts, woman participation on environment issues, because I think it's only. Uh, apologize, Excellency Ambassador, if you might still mm. listen. It's, it's not about gender, faith, or anything, but when women do participate in an issue, normally it's more detailed, more, more consistent. We are more, not exactly consistent, but insisting. <laughs> so, <laughs> ladies are good on that. So, when the issue is handled by lady, normally the fight is getting tougher because they're not going to give up. And with the situation, with the environment we have right now, climate change and anything that's happened, especially with the fish source, the natural resource at sea is already a red alert of sustainability of the resource and with the numbers of population people on earth that is keeping increasing right now the cheapest and the easiest access to protein resource is fishing at sea like beef is very expensive in indonesia even more expensive than in us is this is the cheapest and we will need this resource for our next generation if we want to have quality human kind mankind so i do believe woman participation is very important here we i think nature give us the woman more obligations on sustaining our ourselves our this human uh, basically need woman touch on that and care it's and uh, without without the drive of of more participation of ladies i do believe the fight on climate change on uh, on the environment, especially sustainability of its resource that need for protein supply, food supply in general will be in, in, in threat. Okay. And, and we, cannot, we cannot stop to fight because we also cannot stop to, to generate, to have more, we have more kids coming yes. in the world. Yes. You know, there are countries that's already reduced numbers. Yes. But compared to more babies coming. Yes. And we cannot just having more human with the poor. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Food supply, water supply. What can we do? And that has so to be a call, high call for all of us, especially women. So the future for... The future woman, it has to be women who care of sustainability of our environment, especially that when we talk about food resources, natural food resources, water resources, and of course, in all the climate change. Absolutely. So, Ibu Susi, thank you. That's very interesting. And I hope, and I hope through this, a lot of the female environmentalists in Indonesia are going to come forward and nominate themselves. Or if any of you know of these amazing environmentalists, please do nominate them as well for the awards. We have some questions, Ibu Susi, from the participants. This one says, Hi, Ibu Susi. I am Gracia. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of York in UK. In order to become an independent woman, we as women tend to clash or be trapped in a social dilemma based on a patriarchal system that women shouldn't forget to get married, build a family, women must submit to their destiny as a mother, do domestic parts at home. How do you think, what do you think about this social construction with women 
um, you know, having a right to pursue dreams beyond marriage. Um, what do you do, you know, to respond to this social dilemma of marriage versus pursuing dreams? Maybe stop thinking about it. <laughs> stop thinking that you are woman has things different that you have to structure on such you have to marry. When I was ma I was married very young because mm -hmm. that's the only way for me to be independent from my parents. That was my intention. It, it's a bad intention. I, I don't expect everybody to follow, but in, in the big Javanese culture family, if I don't do this, I will steal a family daughter who got to be in structure like this. But I don't want that. So I decide to be married and move out of my parents' house. So then, yeah, I have my independent continues. But one thing what can help you more independent is first, of course, Stop thinking that you are a woman has all those discrepancies, has all those must be instructor like on the on the men's world. Stop thinking that. Yeah, the second, just do normal. And uh, the, the very important, try to be financially independent. Mm -hmm. So financial work, independence is key. Yeah, it, yeah to to move you through many things. Absolutely. So I can, I can move through many difficulties, barrier, challenge, and this and that, because I'm independently, I'm financially independent. independent. Yes, I think that's been the key. And then a lot of female leaders have, have also echoed your sentiments. Uh, we have to wrap up soon, Ibu Susi, and I know we've taken up more of your time and I hope you're enjoying this as much as we are. We have one question here from the audience. Uh, this is from Momo Ao. Hi, Ibu Susi, you're an amazing woman. I'm an architect and interested in urban studies and human settlement. What do you think of housing on the water? Do you think it is possible? And um, what do we have to do? I mean, have we, should we consider, you know, about it? Ibu Susi, this is a, a unique question, I would say. Uh, no, for Indonesia, we have to think that because I think it's actually much healthier and actually much more Pros, uh, uh, prospect uh, to to have a better water quality living, mm -hmm. because what when I was a minister, I have campaigned to basically live by the water, but move the kitchen to face the road, and the okay. bedroom and the living room face the water, the river or the sea. Why like that? So they don't throw all the garbage and rubbish okay. into the water. from the kitchen to the water. So, and I do believe it's much healthier for yourself and for the, for the sake of the water that we will need continuously. If, if, if you can have those ideas, please do that. Okay. That's I amazing. Think, uh, uh, so I, Living by the water, in the water, is much healthy and better for environment for the, for the people. Of course, by treating and respecting that water is something same like us, need their space, need their health, need their life like us. So, living together with them, with by them, uh, in them, is is the best for Indonesia. Because then we learn to respect water. Because at the moment, still many urban just throw everything to the river. From oil, garbage, plastic, anything that you waste, yeah. go to the river. And this is what I was, I'm, I'm with many friends are fighting. With Pandulaut Nusantara, we fight. We have a beach cleanup program. We have campaign program to also use, to stop using the single use plastic. Mm -hmm. 
in our For daily example, life. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's something Indonesia so, really and, and, and the world has to focus on a lot. That's a very interesting uh, uh, prospect there. And thank you, Momo. Thank you for the questions from the audience. Um, Ibu Susi, you know, thank you so much for joining us. Um, before we, we end this interview with you, maybe just final words from you. Um, you know, if you if you look back and could do things differently, would you have done anything differently? And and what advice, final parting words uh, for for the women of the future? Well, I should I should run up earlier and 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 <laughs> harder and more, because I probably right now will achieve more. So I want to tell to everybody. Don't waste your time. Maximize anything. Your time, your energy, your thoughts, your, your everything. To the best, to the max you can. Because what we have limited in life is our time. <laughs> we won't live forever. So, so, so make it up, worthwhile. Eh? <laughs> yes. Ibu Susi Pujiastuti, such an honor. Uh, we're so grateful to have you uh, and your support for the Women of the Future Award Southeast Asia. Thank you very much. And to the audience, thank you thank for your you questions and your participation. I would like to now hand over to my colleague, Joanna Octavia, who's going to be sharing with you more details on how to nominate yourself or others for the 2021 Women of the Future Southeast Asia Awards. Uh, Joanna was a nominee herself in 2019, and so she'll be the best person to give you um, all the information about our awards program. And if you have questions about that, again, please feel free. Uh, just ask the question through the Q&A button on your screen. Joanna? Hi everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Diana, for the kind introductions. My name is Joanna Octavia. I'm one of the country champions for Women of the Future Awards Southeast Asia in Indonesia, um, and also the country representative together with Diana. Um, I hope everyone's enjoying the webinar so far. Uh, it's, it's been really great to hear from Pinky, Ambassador Owen Jenkins, as well as Ibu Susi. I'm sure there's a lot of insights that we could take away from this webinar. Uh, now I would like to just walk you through some of the steps uh, for the application process. Um, let me just share my screen really quickly. Yep. Um, for the application process, uh, which I'm sure some of you might be wondering, uh, it would everything would go through our website, and I'll just walk you through some of the um, criteria as well as the steps that you need uh, to complete, including all the documents. So, as for the eligibility criteria, um, the Women of the Future Award Southeast Asia um, it's open to all women uh, in the region, age 35 or under. So the cutoff would be on 31st of December, 2021. You must be age 35 or under by that date. Uh, other than that, uh, you must also be citizens or permanent residents of the following countries, um, Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Myanmar, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Thailand, Timor-Leste, Singapore, and Vietnam. I think most of us here uh, on, this, on this webinar today is from Indonesia. So yeah, these are the two main criteria that you have to have uh, before you submit your application. Uh, as for the categories, I think earlier Ambassador Owen Jenkins had, um, you know, had mentioned that we have a breadth of categories in these awards, which I think is something that sets this award, uh, you know, apart from other awards that I've seen uh, for women in the region. Uh, so we have categories spanning from sport to business, arts and culture, uh, you know, all the way to property, construction, and infrastructure, and social entrepreneur. So. Uh, I think if you want more details about what differentiates uh, one category from the other, for example, what separates, you know, what differentiates business from entrepreneur, for example, you could take a look at the website. Uh, I'll provide you with the link to the website at the end of the presentation, so you can note that down as well. Um, you, if you're con if you're not sure which category you fall under, uh, in the application form, you have the opportunity to list up to two categories. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and you can take it from there. 
so for all these categories, the criteria is the same as before. You have to be uh, a woman age 35 or under and a citizen or, and, or permanent resident of the following countries mentioned uh, before. Uh, I would like to draw your attention though to the final category here at the bottom, sorry, at the bottom right, which is mentor of the year. Mentor of the year is not limited by the uh, gender, age, or citizenship requirements uh, or permanent residency requirements as mentioned previously. Mentor of the year is open um, to everyone. So if you have a mentor that you look up to, uh, please feel free to, to nominate uh, him or her in this category. Uh, just a couple of dates that uh, you uh, should keep in mind. Uh, the first is the opening of the nominations. So the nominations open uh, on January 19th. So right now it is open uh, for anyone to submit. Uh, but the nominations will close on April 21st, 2021, which is about uh, three months from now. Uh, once we have closed the submissions, all of the nominations will be reviewed by the committee and five candidates per category will be shortlisted uh, as finalists for the awards. Uh, and then after that, if you are if you are shortlisted as uh, a finalist in any of the category, you'll be invited to attend a judging week, which will take place in the week of the 7th June, um, 2021. What is judging week? So judging week is basically a short virtual interview with your category judge. The judges are different for each category. If you're curious um, who our judges are, you can take a look at our website as well. We have their names and also their short profiles uh, for you to take a look at. Um, after the judging week, the next date that you need to keep in mind is um, October 6, 2021. Um, this is the awards show. All the finalists for every category will be invited to this award ceremony and we're planning to hold it at, at the Hilton Singapore. Um, and this is also when uh, and where the uh, winner for each category will be announced as well. So, but how do you submit a nomination? Um, the nominations are all submitted through our website. So if you go to our website, uh, at the top right, you will see this nominate sign, uh, which I have marked here with a red arrow. That is where you need to go to submit an uh, application or nomination. If you click on that page, uh, on that on the tab, sorry, you'll go to a page for uh, where it will give you more information about the nomination process. And you just have to scroll down until you find this part, which is how to nominate. Um, don't, for, don't worry about like all these details. I'll, I'll provide you with the link at the very end of the presentation. Uh, so just two tabs that you need to uh, pay attention to in this section. Uh, it's at the bottom there. I've marked it with the arrow. It's nominate now and nominate a mentor. So if you're nominating anyone uh, for the 10 awards categories, you can go to nominate now. Um, please uh, bear in mind that you can nominate a woman who fits in the category, uh, sorry, the criteria that we've explained earlier uh, as one of the you know, nominees for the 10 categories, but you can also nominate yourself. Um, and you don't need to have a person who nominates you. Yeah, so there are two ways for, for the awards. Um, but do bear in mind that for mentor, um, the mentor needs to be nominated by someone else. Yeah, so for, for other awards, um, you can nominate yourself or you can nominate others, but for mentor, uh, the mentor has to be nominated by someone else. So um, these are the six things that you need to prepare before you submit your application. Uh, first is a track record of the candidate uh, or yourself, your key achievements, a sense of your visions and plans for the future, uh, both personally as well as professionally. Uh, you also need to submit a 50 word biography for use in the awards program, uh, a high quality photo of a domin nominee or yourself. And lastly, it's a CV. Uh, it, so if you're nominating yourself, feel free to fill in the form yourself. But if you're nominating someone else, please make sure that the person you're nominating is aware um, that you are nominating her and, and that you have all these uh, documents uh, provided by her uh, before you submit the application. Uh, all nominations are treated in confidence. So uh, don't, don't worry about uh, data and such. Uh, it will only be seen by the judging panel and the category sponsor.
For more details, uh, as mentioned before, you can go to our awards website here if you want to take a note of this uh, website, uh, awards.womenofthefuture.co.uk slash SEAsia. Otherwise, if you have any questions that are more specific, uh, feel free also to contact us at this email address, imran at humanofthefuture.co.uk. If you have any questions, feel free as well to put it in the chat box in this webinar and uh, I or the other committee members will be happy to take them. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, uh, Joanna, for briefing us on the nomination, uh, the nomination procedure. Uh, we don't have much time, uh, but I just wanted to ask if you could briefly share your, just very briefly, your experience as a nominee. Um, how did you benefit from being a nominee of the Women of the Future Southeast Asia Awards? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think one thing that stood out the most uh, from my experience with Women of the Future was Southeast Asia is just like meeting all these amazing, kind, accomplished uh, women leaders in their field. And it's just like, as mentioned before, the categories are so, so, so like wide, right? Like I work in diverse, policy, yeah. Diverse, yeah. Like I work in policy, but through this award, I had the opportunity to, you know, meet individuals from arts, from um, property, infrastructure, and we're still in touch until this day. So I think it's really great to be a part of this a community of really amazing, remarkable women and, and just learning from them and their passion and what they do, right? Um, I like the regional focus. Uh, so it's not only you know, Indonesia specific, but also I get to meet um, other women from the region. Uh, so it's been it's been a nice like cultural exchange kind of uh, friendship that, that's going on. Uh, also, I like to mention that being a part of this network opens me up to opportunities that previously I, I wouldn't be getting. Like, for example, this is, you know, Women of the Future Awards Southeast Asia is how I met Diana, right? Yes, uh, how, absolutely. How we get to work together and yes. to organize this event, um, to connect with other uh, speakers, Ibu Susi and uh, Ambassador Owen Jenkins. And I think this is a partnership that wouldn't have been possible if I hadn't been part of this network. So I think, you know, I think it's, it's been really great and I would totally recommend anyone to participate and nominate. Um, Absolutely. And, and just to, um, to sort of call to action and to remind all our participants, if you know, uh, or you yourself are outstanding in the area of or the field that you are focused in, age 35 or under, please come forward, nominate yourselves. Uh, and and, and um, we would love to recognize, you know, outstanding women in this region. And also, if you know anyone who is deserving of the Mentor of the Year Award, come forward as well and put in your nominations. Um, we'll be following this up uh, with a survey and we'd like to know if there's any other topics that you would like us to um, focus on in future webinars. So please do let us know. Until then, I would like to thank Ambassador Owen Jenkins and the British Embassy in Indonesia, um, and also my colleagues, Joanna, Pinky, Imran, um, who are the people behind uh, this effort. And I hope everyone has enjoyed this webinar series. Thank you to everyone who has registered and attended. I hope you've enjoyed uh, listening in as much as we have uh, putting it together. So a very good evening to all of you, and thank you so much. <laughs>